Hello, Keisha Johnson here with uh, this week's lesson from Secrets of the Secret Place. And let me just say this, if you are new to the community, welcome. We are so glad you're here. Uh, we are reading through the word and writing through the word. And I also found this resource a few years ago, well, more than a few years ago, probably about five or six years ago. And it's just an amazing read. There are 52 chapters. So what I am doing is sharing one chapter a week on Mondays. And um, that just gives us some time to read, to, to well, for you to listen, to listen again, and to put in, into action um, what um, is shared here in the chapter so that way we're not rushing through it so what i'm going to do is just read it and you can choose to uh participate in reading the lessons or listening to the lessons and completing them each week or not so i don't want you to feel overwhelmed you can kind of pick and choose uh, what you need to take away from the group okay so this week is the secret of sewing the secret of sewing and last week we were practicing rapid obedience radical obedience hearing from god and taking action immediately so that's what we were practicing last week so the scripture reference for this week is galatians 6 verses 7 through 9 and it reads do not be deceived god is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he shall also reap for he who so for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Perhaps the most common struggle for Christians when it comes to the secret place is to feel like they're spinning their wheels, that their time in prayer and meditation is accomplishing nothing. It's very important in those times of seeming power, po powerlessness to just move on to something else with a shrug that says, well, maybe it will be better tomorrow. Some of us have become so discouraged with feelings of ineffectiveness that we have fallen into a slump of neglect. I hope the secret of this chapter will help to get you back on track. Here's the awesome secret of Galatians 6. When you sow to the spirit by giving dedicated time to the secret place, you will eventually reap life in the spirit eventually is the key word. We have usually applied this text to the grace of giving financially, but it applies equally to the grace of seeking God in listening meditation. It is impossible to sow to the spirit without reaping a corresponding harvest. When I speak of sowing, I am talking about giving of your time to the secret place. I am talking about establishing patterns and habits that enable you to spend significant time with God in the secret place on a daily basis. This kind of sowing will produce a harvest in your walk with him. It will change you and in turn begin to affect everything around you. This secret has carried me at times when I was very tempted to give up the intensity of my pursuit of God. When I've been on fasting retreats, for example, I've often been tempted with feeling like my fast is accomplishing nothing in the spirit. Just when I'm tempted to quit, I remind myself that if I will continue to sow one day, I will reap. I take my focus off my current frustrations and assert my confidence in God's word that a harvest will come my way in time if I persevere. I've often experienced the secret of this chapter. Many times I thought my time in the secret place was rather dull and uneventful, but later perspective showed later perspective showed that it had been in fact a powerful time with God. The actual impact of the secret place I've discovered is usually not evident until a later time. We live in a culture that e that evaluates its priorities based upon immediate results. The voices of the world are demanding that we produce. Now, the race to produce can rob us of investing properly in the secret place. I think we've all been there right we must not evaluate our spiritual progress based upon how many projects we completed or deadlines we met today our devotional life with god is more like the planting of a garden when we arise from sowing into the secret place we will not usually be able to point to immediate results or benefits what we sow today will require an entire season of growth 
before the results are manifest. Sewing is usually extremely mundane, boring, and menial. Rarely are the benefits of sewing seen at the time. Usually it takes a period of time before the benefits of sewing start to become self-evident. Authentic spiritual harvest is rarely instantaneous. The wise believer who understands this will devote himself to arduous sewing, knowing that at the right time, somebody type in the comments, at the right time, at the right time, he will reap if he does not lose heart. He who tills this land will be satisfied with bread. Proverbs 12, 11. To have a harvest, you must till, till, prepare the soil of your heart and then implant God's word into your heart. God's word is powerful, this powerful seed, which will eventually produce a mighty harvest if the soil of our hearts is right. Every moment you spend in a secret place is an investment. You are investing into eternal realities. God makes note of your labors and considers how he will honor your devotion. He considers that. And seeds are being planted in your heart that will bring forth a harvest in your own heart if you continue, continue to persevere in faith and love. So whatever you do, don't quit. Whatever you do, don't quit. Whatever you do, do not quit. When you feel ineffectual, get stubborn and invest even more. The word being sown into your heart today is going to germinate, sprout, send roots downward and branches upward and produce fruit. Catch the secret. He who sows will most assuredly reap. So this week's secret is he who sows will most assuredly reap. So do not give up. So this week, um, if you have not found your secret place yet, you will want to work on that. Even if that means you don't have a physical room, like you can't go and close a physical door. Maybe that's just getting somewhere and closing the door to your heart, whether it's in your bathroom, your car, you know, wherever it is. It doesn't have to be some big fancy prayer room that you put together. Um, I shared some pictures of my little itty bitty coat closet. It's just enough room for me to fit um, with a little table and, and it's fine. It's small, it's intimate, and I just like how it feels. There are some people that have great big prayer rooms, which is okay, but don't feel like you need to have that um, so this week we're just going to practice, um, you know, getting before the Lord and seeing what we can take off of our schedules, um, in order to have more time to spend in the secret place. So that's what we're going to do this week. So, um, that's it. I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.